My name is uh, Vic Chapman and I'm talking to Jesse Ingray Arndell about his educational journey. And uh, just before we get down to Tintax, uh, let me say how good it is to be here today. Um, to see emerging teacher, Indigenous teachers, um, there was a time in 1952 when there was just one. In 1953, as I tell everybody, it was a 100% increase, there were two of us. Uh, and it's been there great to see the proliferation of Indigenous teachers. Because I think mm. teachers do uh, do make a difference. Oh, I can. Uh, um, more important than me being here is you being here. Um, and your involvement and contribution uh, in this uh, teaching and learning film project is, is very important. And um, it will serve to highlight the, uh, the important role of Indigenous teachers, Indigenous educators, and uh, inform those who are involved in uh, Indigenous teacher preparation about the problems of, uh, of Indigenous teachers and, the, and the Indigenous kids. Um, and as I was saying to the others, when I began this journey 68 years ago, there were no signposts and uh, there's nobody to show the way. And if there were anybody to show the way, uh, they'd probably give it the wrong direction anyway. So, um, going it alone, I uh, had to go it alone because my mum and dad couldn't read or write and nobody in my family knew uh, how to navigate the system, mm. so I had to go it alone. And that can be a very lonely experience, but uh, there's no need for you to feel lonely because they, you're surrounded by Indigenous uh, people mm. who are very clever and very good at what they do. Not me, of but course, yeah. in Kofa. Yeah. So thank you for joining this, uh, you. joining in this program. And now it's time for you to do the talking. <laughs> uh, what moments have been significant to you in your educational journey, and why? For example in both formal and informal contexts such as primary, secondary, tertiary studies and learning in the community? Um, so for me, uh, there's, there's been one, one standout moment um, that has influenced my whole journey um, within, up, up until now, within my degrees and education and my careers and it will continue to um, impact in the future I'm sure and that was I, I grew up in in Port Macquarie um, in a little small town called Bonnie Hills a um, yep. little surfing town quite um, uh, relaxed and 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 one of the main things was I was so engrossed in in surfing and and certain other things that I didn't really have a focus um, right one thing that teachers picked up on when I was in high school was um, my capabilities to my ability to, to draw and right. that was yeah. um, something that was urged and pushed and I cottoned on that maybe yeah. I might be okay at this thing and yeah. um, uh -huh. in year 10 I was urged to apply for a scholarship the Mordant Visual Arts Scholarship to right. Cranbrook School um, right. in, here in Sydney to, to board and, and have tuition there um, and from that time and, and that the whole interview process and the whole experience of that and my two years at Cranbrook um, sort of led to COFA and led to it just changed my whole outlook on education right, right. and um, my passion and, and it pushed my passion for visual arts. Yeah. yeah. So probably picking up from where, from where we left off, uh, there was a, uh, an influence of a particular teacher that set you on the track. Yeah, well, there was. It was the. 
it, it was definitely the influence of one teacher, um, yeah. Nancy Incol. It uh -huh. was Nancy Winter then. But she was on the board of um, the selection process right. and was my teacher at Cranbrook School for two right. years. Uh -huh. um, and we've kept in contact and she has um, influenced me in getting pos my position as an art assistant at the Scots College right. as well. So, yeah, yeah she's just an inspirational yeah. teacher. And that was my, my experience as well. Uh, in a little uh, tin pot place uh, called Gaduga. Yep. Uh, where itinerant, itinerant uh, workers very quickly took on the attitudes of the uh, uh, non-Indigenous people, uh, as far as Indigenous people concerned. Yep. And uh, this was a fellow who uh, tested the water for himself. Yeah. And uh, uh, in a, an enrolment of 90, 95% Aboriginal enrolment, he thought I had some academic promise and was instrumental in becoming a state bursar, and the rest is history. Yeah, uh, we like went he on did. To, to school, uh, work in schools. Um, and your parents uh, were also uh, uh, great. It's, yeah, especially my, my mother was very instrumental in pushing right. for everything that yeah. I have. Um, yeah, yeah, I have a lot to owe to her. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely. I think Yes, I think they're pretty wise you know, parents, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, and uh, even though my mum and dad couldn't read or write, they saw the possibilities yep. of, uh, of education and how it could empower you. Yeah. And uh, that's I say, even though they didn't know beaten bull's foot or how to navigate the system, yeah. they could uh, see the benefits. Yeah, I think. And uh, had, yeah. uh, had great encouragement from them. Yeah. And also my siblings, yep. who didn't have that. Uh, just missed out on that opportunity, and they certainly were smarter than I was. Yeah, yeah I think they um, definitely parents, especially and, and siblings. They, the parents want definitely want for their children to lead, lead a better lives than they have, and, yes, and more successful, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But yeah. that has always been the what parents do yeah. best, is not it? Yes, definitely. And who? Um, it's possibly you've answered the quiz question already. Who was and has been the most influential person uh, or experience along the way yeah. and, and why. And I think you've more a sense of Yeah, that. most uh, definitely that. Yeah. It was a combination of, of everyone at that moment and yeah. Yeah. definitely pushed yeah. me forward. Yeah. And how important is it to be uh, being connected to people and community? What people, community and networks have been significant in your to you and your educational journey in in, oh. in terms of that the educational community um, that I'd built and the connections that I made within the schools right. um, have been vital and and in terms of going back and getting support with essays and and everything like that it's just something that I've built for life now um, especially in my experience at Cranbrook school um, and my um, the relationships I've built through through gaining that scholarship, um, it's it's definitely influenced, and will continue influencing everything that I, I do. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had some, uh, I suppose, adverse comments when uh, it was known that I was going to become a teacher. One of the uh, the matrons in the uh, in the community said, of course, he'll only teach black kids. And uh, uh, I thought that was rather a strange thing to say. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But uh, as far, the rest of the people uh, around me were, were backers. Um, okay. Why did you choose to study art education? Uh, for me, it, it was a... It was a natural progression, however, um, I wasn't really engaged with any other subjects at school. Uh -huh. and, and once art picked up and I learnt that I was a visual learner and I could learn through images and, and actually portray uh -huh. um, emotions or feelings or statements through art, um, it sort of clicked and, and I figured I need to push this forward and, and let other people know that this is an avenue for all those things. Right. Uh, in, in what way uh, 
is education important to you and, and to others? Um, you give us an example of that. In terms of um, uh, how do I? Um, where, how would we say that? Well, do you think? Um, well, obviously, education is important to you. Yeah, it's it and, definitely uh, is. I and think it's you want to pass that, that yeah, idea on to, uh, to well, other people. It's uh, why. I wouldn't understand, uh, looking back while I was at school, especially for up until year 10, I wouldn't consider education to be that important. But looking back on it as, uh, from a more of a mature, I'm only 26, but here I'm still, I'm a, a mature age student. But um, looking at it now, you just, it, you realize how important it actually is and, and how much it can affect your future. And having an education um, is just a way to, to better your life and, and, and also have influence on those around you. Uh, the next question, what key issues have been most important or relevant to you as a student of CAFA art and design education? Um, I think the way I sort of read this question was um, uh, you often think of issues as a, as a negative thing but what I found in terms of coming to COFA um, was that the actual degrees that I started with was a fine arts degree right. and that was based on um, a, a UAI or, or an ATAR as it's yep. called now Yes. and I obviously I didn't get that grade so that was one of the factors that would have stopped me from um, entering university and continuing but um, through Neuro Gilead you know, at the University of New South Wales um, I was able to enter through the Aboriginal Admissions Scheme yeah. and, and therefore it worked on, on merit and, uh, and art portfolio um, oh. and that was one of the, the, the things that, that allowed me to continue my journey in, in yeah. education. Yeah. You're talking about UAIs etc. Um, it's my feeling and perhaps I could be wrong. Um, I don't always uh, think that UAIs or high, IQ, high IQs are great indicators of success. I agree. I've, I've taught kids who are pretty uh, top notches, are high IQs, and uh, they fall by the wayside. Yeah. And the, uh, the mediocre ones have uh, made the grade. Yeah. Uh, so I'm inclined to think that sometimes that uh, success is 98% perspiration and 2% inspiration. Yeah, yeah. And it depends on you know, what you want to do and how hard you want to do it. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Yeah. I mean, in terms of my own experience, I majored in photography and DT and, and visual arts in high school and right. um, didn't unnecessarily get the, the, the right mark for this, for right. this course, but yeah. I've succeeded in this course higher than my own expectations yeah. and I'm, I'm happy with it, yeah. I'm happy with how I'm doing. Well you'd be firm, if your interest in photography would take you to uh, the, that iconic photograph uh, by my cousin uh, Bishop of uh, Gough Whitlam pouring the sand into the hand of Vincent Lingari. Yeah. A great, great, a great photo it isn't is. it? Yeah. And what is um, uh, important about visual arts in your learning and the learning of others? And give an example of how visual arts has enriched your journey and how it might enrich the journey of others. Um, coming back to the way in that I was able to use visual arts as a way to um, express myself yeah. and, and that's how it was yeah. um, important for me in my learning and, and it, for visual learners things like science and, and maths just sort of don't make, they're not engaging, they kind of don't make sense. Yeah. So visual arts was just a tool for me to learn and to learn about being Aboriginal, learning about history, learning about yeah. that, that other subjects just didn't really, it didn't really give you that side yeah. of things. Yeah. Um, and you also, I, I love that the visual arts allows someone to learn from personal experience and it's yeah. very personalised. Mm -hmm. um, and I learn from people, that's how I, how mm -hmm. I work. Mm -hmm. and. I think of visual arts as a way of learning from people yeah. and their experiences. Well, all subjects are sort of a load, and I think we have to 
look at the load that we can carry, we, are, mm. we personally can carry, and yeah, that, that answers your question very well. Uh, um, would you give an example of the systems that you have come up against in your journey and how you moved over them? Any, any, any impediments in your that you've encountered in your... Um, not really, I sort of came back to, to thinking of the UAI as, as something that would, could have in, impeded me if it wasn't for the opportunities that Neurogilly allowed. Um, um, but a, apart from that, it's, um, I can't, couldn't really think of no. any systems. No, individual peoples have, uh, it, and people haven't uh, stood in your way, in your, in your journey. Not, not really. I mean, there's, there's obviously certain, um, uh, I think it's generally in life, because I don't necessarily look the stereotypical Aboriginal. Um, it's a big problem, isn't it? It is. It's, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, there's always going to be people who question and, and therefore right. you're trying to justify. Yes. But you need to know in, in your own, in your own self, what you are and who you are. That's right. Um, and when it True. comes down to it, it doesn't matter what other people think. That's right. That's right. For sure. And how has your view of who and what is important in becoming a professional person changed over time? I think that um, once I, I, once I finished my first degree, um, Bachelor of Fine Arts, I, I kind of didn't really take off. It, it's, it's more of a degree that um, has no outcome apart from, well, it does have outcomes, but um, the main is to be a professional artist. And unfortunately, I didn't, didn't take that role on yep. entirely. Therefore, uh -huh. I kind of just strayed for a few, a few years. But uh -huh. um, that made me realize how important an actual, degree, an actual career is and coming back to it. And, um, as I was saying earlier, I, I started with a double degree and, and started with education in my first degree. Right. However, I swapped because I wanted to finish the degree earlier. Being a young-minded man, I wanted to get it over and done with. But um, yeah, those few years really instilled how important it is to have a career and a pathway to, to follow. Yes, yeah. And what is the best way uh, to assist Indigenous and uh, non-Indigenous students to achieve what you have done? I think it's, um, I mean, there's, there's certain things like, like scholarships and, and, and funding and, and certain things like that, especially coming from the city, uh, from the country to the city. Mm. Um, it's expensive living in, yeah. in Sydney and certain things like that. But I think in terms of schools and, and something that I would, you know, I'm making my goal to implement in schools is a, range, is a diversity in, in cultural in awareness and, and um, just, just multiculturalism, multiculturalism in schools, yeah. um, I think is going to make a difference, the most difference, and having acceptance of, of yeah. all cultures within yeah. Australia. Um, you're talking about multiculturalism. I was just saying to a uh, uh, last person we interviewed that how, uh, what a great difference uh, the yeah. immigration program has made to how people perceive each other in Australia yep. and what a great advantage it has been to uh, for Aboriginal people that uh, now for perhaps for the first time Australians are seeing people who look different, who mm. speak differently, have mm. different customs yep. and they've uh, had a, a, a profound effect on almost every aspect of our lives. Mm. And it would be great to, to see that through your eyes, the change. Yes. It'd be no. very and uh, in almost 82 years, it, there has been a fantastic change, yeah. a big change. Yes, imagine uh, across many, uh, many areas. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking just a while ago about scholarships. Now, for kids who lived in outback areas uh, like Walgett and Bowaran and uh, Burke and those sort of places, yeah. uh, the scholarships are, are bound, really. They do, uh, you know, uh, compared with uh, in my time when I was a kid. Mm. 
uh, and there's offers of uh, placements by GPS schools. Yes. And lot, a lot of kids are taking uh, advantage of, uh, uh, for very short periods only. Yeah. They, uh, when they come back home again, they, uh, they, I'm staying, I'm not going back. Yeah. Uh, how do we overcome that? So in terms of retaining um, Indigenous students in, in schools such as the GPS system and, um, and, and making them, uh, we need to make them want to stay instead of have to stay. And, and, and we need to do that through um, involving community and family more often, I think. Yeah. And, and redesigning courses, especially in, I think, in the visual arts, um, to cater more to, to a diverse range of students as opposed to um, sort of singularity and the majority. Mm -hmm. so, and I think, I think we really just need to make them want to stay and be a part of it. And it's kind of like a, yeah, every, from the country and, and coming to the city, it can be very unfamiliar and hard. So I think we need to, I think key role models and influences yeah. are, are vital in, in those sort yeah. of situations. Yeah. Yes, definitely. There seems to abound. Uh, uh, we're conditioned. There are lots of uh, our people who are conditioned to believe, uh, or they uh, find it easy to believe that uh, we are destined to remain on the bottom rung of the ladder. Um, how do we overcome that? Uh, I th uh, perhaps it, no, it's, a, it's a tough question. Isn't it? it is. Yeah. It's a tough question, but I think we are doing that in getting out there and 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 and, and being independent and doing what we're doing. And the more awareness that Aboriginal people are people as well, and 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 they they're they're not less than the majority. They're not the other. I think uh, we are doing that right now and, and it's, I think, as you may probably agree with, it's, it's getting better. Yeah, yeah. And it is getting better. Um, um, this year at Wollonga, the Indigenous Centre at Wollongong, we welcomed uh, 45 students, uh, Indigenous students, uh, represented across the faculties. Yeah. Last year, the same number graduated from Wollongong. Yeah, and I do believe that at, uh, uh, here, New South Wales, says the numbers are much bigger, uh, yeah. and that's so encouraging when you go across the Unicross there and you see a, a TI uh, fellow in charge of the place and yeah. a fellow from uh, uh, Wollongong Lake, uh, Wollongong Lake down near Wollongong, second in charge. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, that's really exciting, mm. exciting news. It's and uh, We need to make sure that it's not a scary place. It's, it's not as big as every, everyone thinks university. No, no, yeah. And that's, uh, I, I quoted uh, uh, something from uh, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey uh, to the last student that we had here. And uh, Oprah said, I, I don't think of myself as a poor little ghetto girl who made good, I think of myself as someone who from an early age knew I was responsible for myself and I had to make good. Yeah. Do you comment on that? I think it's, I think that's vital for, for everyone and, and I think you need to know what you need to do for, to make your life better yeah. and, and for your future families yeah. and children. But also for, uh, just yeah, for yourself. I think yep. knowing exactly what you want to do and what you want to be, and then pursuing it yep. and being confident with that, will will definitely help in the future. I think Sarah Henderson, the the cattle station owner and writer, had it all all summed up. Though. The power is within ourselves. Yeah. We have the power. Do anything we want. Most definitely. We want to I do. think so. I think we do. Anyway, I think we've uh, come to the end of the line. Do you have any any other comments that you'd like to add to what we've? What we've Not. I said? just just hope that this 
video work that we're, that we're all a part of helps to build an idea in, in students' minds that, that yeah. university is yes. is attainable and, and that yeah. it, it, it can be achieved and it's yeah. not scary at all. And yeah. the support networks are incredible. But from what I'm, uh, I, I've gleaned today, you know, from the four people who uh, sat here and talked talk to me, uh, there's a great future ahead. Mm. And uh, this project that is undertaken by CAFO is, is going to be a successful one. Because they're good stories, yeah. uh, good stories to listen to. Yeah, and, and that's I an think exciting kids will listen to. Kids always love a good story. That's true. Very Thank good. you. Thank you, Vic. Thank you for that.